Although this is a quick fight podcast, the following audio contains suggestive humor, graphic language, and some things that may not be suitable for those under the age of 18 or with soft listening habits. Listener discretion and viewer discretion are both strongly advised. Ladies and gentlemen, what's good, y'all? Chris Gary, Andrew Benjamin, Teep to the Junk. We're going to do a little rapid-fire edition of the We Are Rising podcast, Rising 20 edition. Now, Great, great. Thank you, Teep, for, for, for joining us. Appreciate it. But, uh, Christian, uh, sorry for interrupting because that's kind of your thing. Mm -hmm. So, do uh, you want to take off uh, from fight number one uh, from the uh, fight card? Ah, uh, yes. The fight card that was released earlier today as the... Uh, December 21st, we'll see the Lightweight Grand Prix kick off the show. Tofik Musayel versus Johnny Case. Luis Killer Gustavo versus Patricky Pitbull Fiore. Who do you think's going to win these two bouts, and who do you think's going to win it all? Because the Lightweight Very... Grand Prix finals is going to take place before that intermission. Yeah, well, from the beginning, I always thought that Johnny Case would win. I think Johnny Case knocks out Tofik Musayev or submits him. And then Patricky Pitbull knocks out Luis Gustavo in the first. And then it comes down to Case, Patricky. Case wins. I think it'll be a long, hard fight. But in the end, Case will win. It'll be the new lightweight champion, Grand Prix winner of Ryzen Fighting Federation. On to you, T. Who do you think wins? I got Petrucci. I think he's going to be too much for Gustavo right now. Hopefully they'll rematch later. And um, uh, it's almost a toss-up between Case and Musayev. I'm leaning slightly to Musayev. He just looked really dangerous in his last fight, solid everywhere. So I think it's going to come down to Pitbull, Musayev. Pitbull is your champion. I'm going to have to Christian. go with what Andrew said. I think it'll be Case and Fiore in the finals. Fiore will probably KO Gustavo. Case will probably make Musayev tap out. But I don't want to piss off Johnny Case too much. I think Pitbull <laughs> Pit Fear Ray is going to win. Take that Grand Prix title back to Bellator. Take the Ryzen Lightweight title, the inaugural version, back to Bellator. And maybe contend for the Bellator belt. Okay, and sounds good. Next fight. Bantamweights. We got three Bantamweight belts. We got Bellator's Patrick Patchy No Love Mix uh, against Yuki Matoya. And we've got Ishwatari versus Ogikubo. And then obviously we've got Kai fighting Kate for the Bantamweight title. Guys, who wins each of those bouts? Oh boy, so Petriki a mix versus Yuki Matoya. That's a fight I'm looking forward to the most. It's really hard to think about who wins this one. I kind of want them both to win, but gun to my head, you know what? I think Petriki mix has been on a roll. He's going to submit Matoya. He's going to be 14-0. What about you, Teep? I got mix submitting Matoya or soccer kicking him. That's what I'm hoping for. Huh. Patrick Mix is one of the most badass prospects in the sport. Yeah, amateur and pro combined, 23 wins in a row now for him. I think he's going to take it away. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the other ones. I'm going to take Ishu Itari over Okakubo, although I think it's going to go the distance. And then I'm taking Cape to beat Kai with a heart, not the not the head. I don't know who's going to win, but I'm cheering Cape. All right, guys, go ahead. I got Mix defeating Motoya via submission because, of course, he has eight submission victories on his record as of right now. I got Ogikubo defeating Shintaro in a upset type of fashion because, of course, Ogikubo's been going through some shit. He's basically saying this is his life, and if not, I might as well just go ahead and end it all. So I'm picking Ogikubo to beat Shintaro Ishiwatari. And as far as the Ryzen Bantamweight Championship of the world is concerned, I think we're going to see... A star come out of Angola in Manel Cape. I hate to break it to all the Supreme Kai Asakura fans, but easy fucking money all the way via knockout, of course. Nope. 
Don't be pissing off them as a crew of fans, Christian. So I just want to give my quick picks. Oh, Kubu Ishitari. You know, both are great. Both are going to put up a great fight. But you know what? I think that Ogi Kubo is going to just will himself to win this. Like you said, basically what you said, Christian. This is his life, and he's going to be hungry for wins. And as for the winner of the main event, who becomes the new Ryzen Bantamweight champion, I think it's going to be the Angolan sensation, Easy Money and Manel Cape. He hasn't looked bad in almost any fight except for the Okazaki fight this year. And I thought that he won that original Azakura fight. And he was, and he had the toughest fight for Azakura in, in his rising career so far. Yeah, I think, right. yes, Angol will add a champion to their many, <laughs> many MMA ranks if they are any. <laughs> mm -hmm. Badass. Okay, keeping it moving. Uh... Let's say at 145 of featherweight, we've got Kai's brother Mikuru Asakura fighting John Makapa to share. Guys, who wins this? I'm going to say Mikuru. I think that, oh, yeah, without a doubt, Mikuru should on paper, and this is a fight that he should win by all means. If he doesn't win, then focus on his YouTube career, but I'm picking uh, Mikuru to uh, easily defeat uh, Makapa. Christian? Like I said, I already know who I'm picking. I got Mikuru beating John to Shelia do Makapa. Via knockout. All right, I'm going to call upset. I'm going to call Macabre, even though I don't think he might have fought in Rising Rules. I think he's going to rise to the challenge and enjoy it. And I think he's actually going to get a guillotine submission here. Damn. Understood. Okay, Understood. let's keep it moving. No time to make fun of me. So let's <laughs> talk about the big boys. We got Jerry Prohaska, Rising Light Heavyweight Champion, fighting Brian Bader's dude, CB Dalloway. He couldn't get Bader, so he got his training partner. CB Dalloway is coming in after a layoff. He's fighting Jerry Prohaska for the title. We also have Vitaly Shematov fighting Simone Biong. And we got Jay Kuhn fighting Satoshi Ishii at heavyweight on top of those two bouts. Guys, who wins this? Let me go ahead and say this first. Unless CB Dalloway is pumped up full of Royce like TRT Vitor, I think that Jerry's going to knock him out. As far as the Vitaly Shematov fight goes, I'm sorry, dude. I already coined Simon Biong as the next John Jones. I think that Biong's going to knock him. Vitaly's block off. As far as the JQ and Satoshi Ishii fight goes, as long as JQ tries and counters Satoshi Ishii's boring judo skills, he might win via finish. I just hope that Satoshi Ishii don't stink up the fucking joint because he is a boring motherfucker. All right, Andrew. So, uh, regarding a uh, championship fight, Jerry Dalloway, you basically have the less better half of Divine Bader and that fighter, but nonetheless, Jerry wins easily. I think Jerry easily knocks him out in the first round. Dancing Russian versus the Cameroonian uh, turned Italian fighter, Simon Myung. You know, I have to say, love wins. I think that Vitaly Shematov is going to want his former girlfriend to see him win. I'm hoping that he gets a win in this. I don't want to see an Owen 2 dancing Russian in my Ryzen promotion. And for the big, big boys fight, Jake the Honey Bear Hewn versus Satoshi, putting me to sleep always Ishii. <laughs> oh, God. Hewn, please fucking win this. Listen, don't let Ishii grab you, or it'll be a longer night than a Ryzen intermission. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And, you know, speaking of... Let's go straight to the women next. No, hold on, hold up. Hold up. Let me get my words in, brother. Okay, okay, okay. So we got Jerry Prohaska is going to retain his title, but I do think it's going to either be a late finish for him or go the distance. I think Dalloway is pretty tough and experienced. The wrestling is going to slow the fight down. So I say, Jerry, by a uh, clear decision, Shemitov, Biong, I have no official opinion. I don't know too much about Biong, but I'm going to go with Shemitov, brothers. They're very exciting, and uh, I'll be cheering them both, but... uh. I don't actually have an informed opinion on that. That's just a, oh, that's a heart. All understood, right there. No head. Oh, all right. Let's go. Then for Hune, go. Let's Ishii, go. Okay. we want, we want uh, Jake Hune to bash Nyquil Ishii and, <laughs> and take the win. So I'm going to pick Hune. I, again, I don't actually know, but that's, I know what I'm cheering for. All right. Keep it moving. Let's, let's go, go to the, go let's to go the to the girls' fights. Now. What about Miyu Yamamoto? Miyu Yamamoto Yama versus Amp the Pocket Rocket in the Super Anim Weight title what? fight. No. Ayaka Hamasaki yeah. versus Yohi Han 3. And then the women's 112-pound catchweight fight is the rematch between Rana Kubota and Lindsay the Damsel Van Zant. Who do y'all got? I'm going to go ahead and say first, Miu's going to be amp. Rana's going to probably get her revenge on Lindsay Van Zant. And I hope that C.O. Hiham gets over the hump against Ayaka Hamasaki. But I'm going to say that Ayaka's going to win and shut the door on her. 
Easy answers for all three. I think that Amp is going to submit Miyu, judging by how easily she got Ayaka down and almost submitted her in the previous match. You know what? Miyu doesn't even have half the defense that Ayaka has, so I see Miyu being armbarred in the first round. For the rematch between Lindsay Van Sand versus Rain Kubota, ring don't matter. I think that Lindsay Van Sand is one of the top prospects in that weight division. Uh, Super Adam Way, Adam Way, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I think that Lindsay Van Sand is going to once again get the win by submission. I apologize. Well, the Ayaka Mazaki versus uh, Seo Uh Fourth fight? Fourth time that they're fighting, I think? Or third? Which one? Third. Third. I think it's going to be 3-0 for Ayaka. Ayaka is going to come away the winner with a submission win over her longtime rival. And, uh... Yep, that's how I see it. Teep, how, what do you think about these three female fights? All right, I got Amp the Rocket by some kind of flying knee apparatus. <laughs> and then I got Reyna, actually, uh, although it's close and stylistically it's good for Lindsay, but I think in the ring, Reyna's going to get it done with uh, some sort of strikes, ground of strikes, you know, stomps, soccer kicks after a knockdown or a liver shot into soccer kicks. And then I see Hamasaki taking out Soyam. And so let's keep it going. Yeah, We're tearing through this. This is a record for us by like multiple. End. Let's go ahead and go to the kickboxing bouts to finish this off. We got Rui Ibata, the knockout champion, versus obviously Wonder Boy Shindo Tenshin Asukawa in a 123 pound catch weight bout. And then we got Taito Shiratori versus Taiga Kawabe, the lovable loser, at 136 pounds. This is basically under rising kickboxing rules. The Nasukawa Ibata fight under special rules. Who do y'all got quickly? Uh, for the uh, Shiratori Taiga, Taiga could have won that fight if he didn't joke around in the last round. And you know what? I'm going to walk back and say that Taiga is going to be his first big win of 2019. And hopefully 2020 will be a better year for him. And for Tenshin Asuka, Rui Ibata, you know what? Everybody's saying that Ibata is his toughest opponent in Ryzen. But, you know, I know that a lot of people have turned on Tenshin. People want are hitting him now. I still a big fan. I think Tension is going to come away the winner easily. First round knockout. Teep, what did you say? Okay, so so I'm going to lean toward Taiga, but I'm mostly just based on what you said and not on any inherent intelligence or perception I have myself. So I'm going to go with Taiga for the first one. And I just, I don't know too much about Ibada, but I do know you don't bet against Tension, Asukawa, and kickboxing. Are they for the same weight class? Yes. Um, yes, kind of. Yeah, Tension, all day, cartwheel kick. Rolling thunder, spinning shit, double black flip, spinning back shit. Who knows how it's going to be? It's going to be violent. It is not going to a distance. Tension is going to take the day. Okay, who's left? I think Taiju Shiratori is going to finish off Tiger and make him a one-hit wonder, even though he's only in his mid-20s. I just think that what? the Prince know damn well that he's probably one of the better stars to come out of Tapping Gym other than Tension Nasukawa. And speaking of Nasukawa, y'all are right. You don't bet against the man in kickboxing. We saw what happened last year when he faced off against Floyd Mayweather, and we don't want to talk about that bullshit. But when he faced off against a kickboxer like Rui Ibata, who does have a career of his own, I think it's going to be pretty magical. But I do see tension winning via knockout in some form or fashion. Fantastic, guys. And real quick, we just did the whole damn card. But uh, real quick, who's going to win between Fedor and Rampage? And why? On the 29th, Belts on Japan quickly. Who's going to win between Fedor and Rampage? How does it go down? Fedor is going to win the second round. I think Fedor round knockout. Oh. One at a time. Oh, so sorry. Christian, after you. After you, Christian. Fedor via second round submission. You? I think Fedor first round knockout, but that first round is going to be the deciding factor. If Rampage gets his punch in, I think Fedor goes down. But if Fedor gets his first in, I think Rampage will be put, will get put to sleep. <laughs> Deep? Yeah, I think we're looking at um, speed, power, equation is still in Fedor's favor, although it's closer than it was when they were both in their physical prime, closer to their physical prime. But uh, all these years later, Fedor still got those fast hands. People trying to say he doesn't, based on not looking so fast against Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen is fast compared to your heavyweights, you know? So I think Rampage, even though he's got good hands, good good form, good blocks with his forearms, is good. He's going to eat some uh, glorious overhands of absolute victory and go down, and I can't wait. Guys, I think we did the whole fucking card. We're awesome. Yeah, Wait, quick, uh, quick question, uh, since we got a little bit of time, Teep, uh, Kyojin Kuroguchi had to uh, vacate the Bantamweight title as well. Who do you see as the next Bantamweight uh, contender for Bellator's uh, Bantamweight division? Uh, I would say if Patrick Mix wins here and he doesn't get a rising title shot, he's very likely to fight for the title. I mean, 
this point, he'll be 12-0 and amateur, 12-0 and pro if he beats Smatoya. I think it's perfect. Not sure about who he fights. The thing, Cowboys in the in the Grand Prix, I'm really not sure, but uh, there's some... Um, I know, I know. Patricky Mick versus Juan Archuleta. Yes. Book it, Bellator. Holy that shit. shit. That's a good fight. Book that Juan, shit. Juan Archuleta, four-division champion in, the, what was it? Uh, King of the Cage. King of the Cage, or was one of these orgs? It was King of the Cage. Yeah, he was at 135, 45, 55, and 160, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fight. That, that would be a fun, fun, wasn't it? That, that would be that a fight. fun fucking fight. Hey. That would be a fun fight between Patrick Mitz and Juan Archuleta. Book that shit, Rich Cho. Book that shit, Scott Coker. That's <laughs> right. Scotty and Rich need to hook that shit up. And actually, just very quickly, next year, I want to see a 16-man, 8 versus 8, Bellator versus Ryzen, Bantamweight Grand Prix. Oh. It needs to happen. It needs to happen between the two orgs. They can put 16 guys in there at 135, and it would just be one of the most epic things we've seen in the modern era, I think. This race. Yes. Lastly, Bellator needs to do a women's flyweight Grand Prix next year for the DAZN Grand Prix. And tonight we've got yeah. Alima Lay fighting Kate Jackson. We've also got Velasquez is fighting Bruna Ellen, so that's the top four taken care of. And then last night, just very quickly, Alejandro Lara and Veda Ortega, one of the best fights of the fucking year. Mm. Oh, my God. If you guys haven't seen it, all I'm going to say is Terminator elbows. It went the distance, but it was just an incredible fight. And, uh, Ortega, she got her face split open in the last fight with Alina Lay. Yeah, but in this one, it was split open. They kept fighting. It looked like a horror movie. It was incredible. There was so much heart on display. Lara, she was doing the stepping off and angles and everything. Made a lot of adjustments from what we've seen previously from her. Right now, Velasquez and Ellen tonight have to outshine Alejandra Lara's performance last night. Or they will not get the next title shot. There's a lot at stake tonight in Hawaii. It's an exciting time. Guys, any thoughts on that? I think that when it came down to last night's fight, Azul Lara left Veta Arteaga muy muy rojo. And I think that she's going to probably get the next fight if this fight tonight between Velasquez and Ellen doesn't live up to expectations. And yeah, I do agree. A 16-man Bantamweight Grand Prix would really kick the shit off of everything that any promotion really has ever done because the UFC and Pride couldn't do it. When Pride was getting bought out by the UFC, so, you know, that shit would be fun. And yeah, I do think that a women's flyweight Grand Prix for the zone would definitely do wonders, especially with the amount of talent that are wanting to come in and make their names because the UFC are a bunch of dicks. Well, they just have so much. Uh, uh, the two orgs, you can, you can put it together. They have enough quality fighters. Hopefully, Ishwatari keeps fighting. I win or lose, he keeps fighting because he's always right up there. But uh, between the two orgs, and we need to get Zach in here from Bad Moon Rising Pod and all four of us talk about what a Bantamweight Grand Prix would look like. Beltor versus Ryzen needs to happen. Just also want to say that if McFarlane wins tonight between, uh, in, in, between Mark McFarlane versus Jackson, winner of Watanabe versus Ilara Jalan, that's, that's her next, uh, should be her next opponent. Mm -hmm. No question about it. Exactly. I think no, that Lee right. Malay is going to terminate Kate Jackson hey. back to the UK. And probably the winner of, like you said, Andrew, the winner of Joanne versus Connor Watanabe is going to probably get that next shot right out the gate in 2020. You know, it's possible, guys. I gotta say, Alejandra Lara last night, she made a statement, because Ortega took it to Lima, even though with a cut stoppage, and I could see them giving it to her. Bellator, they're sort of halfway to Japan, like, they, they're very serious about cutting weight, they're very serious about being exciting, not to get up, not being marketable necessarily to get opportunity, but be exciting to get opportunity. She put on the kind of performance where the executives are looking at be like, yeah, we can promote that. Look at that performance. Flying, spinning shit. She was throwing combinations with her elbows off the cage. And most importantly, when she pushed Ortega to the cage, she didn't just sit there and hold on to her like T-Bow did with Khabib. She pushed off and started throwing fucking combinations. Everything they want to see and that I want to see. But also, Velasquez is undefeated if she beats Bruna Allen. That's tough. So between those fights and the one that's in Japan, I think whoever doesn't get the title shot, the other two winners need to fight each other. Mm -hmm. It's an exciting time, man. It's some crazy shit. But next year, they could just go ahead and do a damn live belt, eight-woman Grand Prix because women's flyweight. Because, like, there's so much going on. Even, like, there are these characters like Valerie Lareda and stuff. I don't know if Carrie Melendez is coming up to flyweight. I mean, she's just a bit small, but... There's so much potential for that weight class. This is the year coming up. This is the year exactly. to put eight women up there and break them into stardom. 
Exactly. And also, Ryzen, do your women's open weight tournament as well, please. Thank oh, you. No. Please, no way, for the love of fuck. Ain't no way you're going to get eight big girls off of World Star Hip Hop. <laughs> No, there's judo players, there are probably some big girl boxers. It's not a deep division, but it's the kind of division that doesn't need to be deep to be awesome. Abby Garcia needs a belt around her. They need to get her in there and get busy and stop trying to make her cut weight. She's too damn big. <laughs> Just She's a heavyweight, so you do an open weight. Because if Mirko Krokop can fight 404 fucking pound burrito, burrito... <laughs> Then Gabby Garcia can fight some just big women who aren't as enormous as her. What the fuck? We gotta grow up. Just because they're women doesn't mean they can't have open weight fights. And they need to make that happen. Gabby's a star. She's close friends with Cyborg. So you could even have like a Cyborg fighting someone on the same card in Japan on a talent share. It's just a very exciting time. But the big girls are not getting their credit. Yeah, exactly. Especially because like it's open weight, there. so it doesn't have to be just heavyweights. You can put Julia Butt in there if you want to. You can put Olga Rubin if you want to as well. There's a lot yeah. of big girls out. Yeah, yeah especially Andrew, considering I, the fact I, I, that when Julia. it comes up to 155 pounds and up, there's not that many spaces up there for women. Right. I asked Julia Bud about a year ago on Twitter, if she, uh, you know, trying to get some hype for Women's Grand Prix. And she said yes. And Leslie Smith expressed interest. People will go up and fight. I'm sure Cyborg, she won't fight her friend, her close friend, Gabby, but she'll fight someone up there big. Why not? They want the shine. They want to fight in Japan where it's an honor in the ring, ideally. Under the rise now, of the world. Now, with in, in Bellator, you now have a, a, a top 10 bantamweight, potentially featherweight as well, uh, fighter for the organization as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she mentioned the thing about Alima Lake, because I guess they're friends, so it might be that she could do 135 or 125. They do a Grand Prix, boom, there you go. She put her in it. <laughs> if she can make 125. Exactly. Oh, uh, I forgot. Yeah, she said she wanted to prove herself, so put her in a tournament. She doesn't have to be in the champion's bracket or a friend of Lee Malay, though. Um, just put her in the other bracket and let her prove herself. Do a straight line, life title tournament. It's just perfect. The timing is beautiful. Exactly. And speaking of, it was beautiful that we even got to do this rapid fire. You know, I hope the opportunity presents itself next time when we go full-blown on this type of thing. But, hey, it was fun talking to y'all. Let's just go ahead and find awesome. us how to contact us through Twitter. I am on Twitter at ChrisGary92. If you follow me, I'll follow you back. I'm on Twitter as Teep to the Junk, T E E P. Teep to the Junk, as in a punt to the balls. <laughs> Andrew. And I am available at Avenger1. If you don't like wrestling talk, then do not follow me. Or just follow me and mute everything I say. And you, of course, can follow the We Are Rising podcast official Twitter at We Are Rising Pod for all your Rising, JMMA, Jake Kick, and all related sports and combat sports necessities. Mm -hmm. And but also, lastly, lastly, I want to give a shout out to Zach from the Bad Moon Rising Pod. Follow that channel as well. As just well support as JMMA. Fights. As get well these, as Focus get Fights as well. Accounts. Say again? As well as Focus Fights. We cover prospects from all over the world. The scenes of most of the seven continents in this world, when it comes down to fighting, will be emphasized. You can follow us on Twitter, at Focus Fights. Oh shit, guys. Good show. I think we should call it. Yeah, might as well go yes. and call it for Teep, for Andrew, I'm Chris. Good night, and as Lenny Hart always likes to say... We done. We out. Talk to y'all later.